This is ThinkTech Hawaii Community. Well, aloha and how you doing? Welcome to Ibachi Talk. Gordo, the techs are here. The good old buddy Andrew, the security guy. <laughs> Thought you were going to forget your name. Aloha, everybody. <laughs> Happy I, to be I here. I know who I am. <laughs> he kind of slowed down he there. Kind of slowed down. And we got Andrew, the security guy. We got Dieter. Dieter, nice to see you, bud. Dieter, nice Mr. Gibbon. Nice well, to see you. Welcome gonna, on the set. We're going to talk right. about the uh, symposium, upcoming symposium um, for a safer Hawaii, which you're going to be intimately involved with. I think I'm involved with it, too, but I'll find out later. <laughs> anyway, so grab yourself a chair, have a libation, join us for another yeah. off-the-scale episode. Some, a lot, this uh, powerful, I'm having a powerful Ibachi water talk. libation. But first, <laughs> well, you got but first, I have my little rants that Let's I do every year. And, you know, I'm being very thematic lately, a lot on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and so on. Okay. So, but I'm going to talk about a little uh, upside, though. It's a kind of rant with upside. So, Fidelity Investments, you've heard of those guys? Yes. Right? So, they uh, now allow its clients to view their Bitcoin, Ethercoin, or Litecoin through their um, web portal and be able to go directly to Coinbase and see how their investments in Bitcoin are doing. Okay. Awesome. Can they trade back and forth? Uh, not yet. Okay. But the cool thing about this is, like, except in Hawaii. Well, because Hawaii, oh, this is Department the right of part. Commerce and Consumer Affairs, <laughs> shut down Coinbase in Hawaii. So if you have a Fidelity account and you want to track your Bitcoin investments, you cannot. Yeah. So Be can you sue the DCCA yeah. for, for impinging upon your services yeah, my, I, unfairly? Yeah, yeah. So again, um, you're not allowed to take advantage of your portal fully because of a state like the state is limiting my ability to go to Coinbase and check track yeah. my. Um, yeah. Well, first of all, I don't have any in there because they wouldn't allow me to invest using Coinbase. So in Hawaii, so I wouldn't have a reason any. to go there. Oh. Because they didn't let me. But I got other places I go. Yeah. So anyway, I. But it's like it, they're de depriving you of services. Yeah. So and then the other thing they also announced that um, um, at their conference uh, this year, um, their big their Bitcoin plans. So, so Fidelity's talking about Bitcoin plans and what they're going to do in that space. Um, their um, employees can now buy uh, their meals at the restaurant in their cafeteria with Bitcoin. Oh, in the at the at the Fidelity cafeteria, you awesome. can use Bitcoin to buy your lunch. Do we have that at Ice Tea? I don't know. I'll talk to the boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, you should talk about that. And then I've got a couple of lo local retailers who I'll be talking to next week who are in the process, and um, we're going to be setting them up, and they'll start accepting Bitcoin as transactions. And what do they sell? They sell uh, uh, libations. <laughs> libations, pizza, ah, great sandwiches. Very and well. So, um, that sounds like one of our former guests. It's one of our former guests. So nice. that's happening. Anyway, that was my little mini rant. Not that that wasn't even a rant. That was kind of a biggie thing. You but you I still like I hook. still like getting the jab into the DCCA. I just yeah. don't love doing that. Anyway, Dieter. Yes. We always like to learn a little bit about a little bit about our our guests, and so okay. um, tell us a little bit of background. So where did you go to school? Um, well, where are you I. From? <laughs> Well, I'm originally from California, so I grew up in a uh, beautiful central coast, Monterey, went to school, Monterey High School, went to nice. college, Sonoma State, after a four-year uh, trip uh, serving Uncle Sam's Navy out here in Hawaii, so yeah. I was stationed out here for a few years, went back to California, and then came back here uh, post 9-11. Um, I was in the valley working, uh, actually doing computer design software and engineering. I was a uh, selling software programs and unfortunately post 9-11 the tech bubble and whole the Bay Area crushed and <laughs> the Bay Area cr crushed. It, it pretty <laughs> much imploded <laughs> yeah I've never seen anything like that in my life wow so and I found myself out here so and so back how, out long here. You, how long you been here no back out here um moved out here in 02 so, oh, so it's, well, wow it's what have you been doing <laughs> um <laughs> yeah you should been know <laughs> trying to figure that out I don't know <laughs> But you're in the you're so and we're going to talk about this upcoming symposium. But you've been in this um, access control security system business for quite some period of time. Um, well, I've been in sales for quite <coughs> some time. Um, security, I'm a little bit newer at. Um, been a few years, but uh, but I've done a lot of work with um, with high tech, and it kind of fit right into to my knowledge base on technology. So um, it's it's a fun industry. I've got to say, it's a uh, it's pretty neat. It's ever changing. So I'll keep yeah. me on my toes. <laughs> That's that is for sure. I mean, it's 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 one of the actually I think it's one of the fastest growing, I'll call it modern industries now yeah. mm. that I've seen in a long time. You know, cryptocurrencies was one of my favorites. That's obviously. pretty modern. That's, That's pretty modern. modern. But what's happening in this space with it comes to access controls, cameras, 
uh, the Internet of Everything, mm -hmm. the smarts in the cameras, smarts in the doors, yep. all that kind of stuff. It's really just going through its massive metamorphosis right now. Yeah, and what, what I think is, is telling is the fact that we're starting to really bounce up against privacy concern, you know, where, where security and privacy have always, always been, had a tenuous relationship mm. with each other. Mm. The, the, it, the technology itself has become so intelligent that it's, it's, is it on the point of invasive or not? That, that, those questions are a little trickier today when you have multi-factor authentication and things right. like that. I'm gathering yeah. biometric data from someone to use in a system. So it's it's interesting, and those are the discussions that uh, I find I find interesting. Yeah, and so and so and you're in the Fed space, so you're yes. you're seeing it from um, from now. When you say the Fed space, is that DOD or is that federal government or all of the above? What all the that? above. All, all the above. above. Yeah. So they look at it from a different perspective than you would say the John Q. Public. I would think they do. Um, you know, currently today it's kind of interesting because the Fed is going through a change as well. Um, they have. They have um, new direct directives on how they want to secure their bases. Um, in fact, with the new DBIDs that just came out for the gates, going on a biometric system. So the Fed space traditionally, you know, access control was kind of like, I'm going to punch in my key, I'm going to open the door, and, and it's changed a lot. It's, it's changed true. from multi-levels where, you know, from what we call a secured, um, what we call a SCIF, which is a secured top secret space where you have an X10 um, tumble on the front to get in to yeah. now where I present my credentials at the gate or I present my credentials at the door and it actually tracks who I am. A picture of me will pop up so they will know me just to get into a door. So it goes all the gamut today. So right. it's really, really pretty interesting where that space is going. Well, and, I, and without getting into divulging top secrets or any of those kinds of things, I mean, there's all different entities within the federal space. Yes. I mean, all the different branches of the military yes. and there's the federal governments themselves. Mm -hmm. Do they have one ID credentialing system that allows them to go across all the different disciplines? Well, um, for the DOD, yes. The DOD okay. actually has what they call the CAC. Um, the CAC card, okay. So it's the CAC card. It runs on the DEER system. Um, there's different databases to go through there, and it's actually a smart chip now, so it's changed a lot. But other areas within the Fed space, they have their own version of the CAC. So okay. like the FBI has their own version of the CAC. Um, the difference, like CIA, uh, probably has their own. I don't know. I can't talk about can't that. Can't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the executive. So, it's public knowledge, the executive branch uses yes. uh, PIV. Yeah. Okay. So PIV. PIV. Right. right. Personal information. PIV so two hundred one compliant. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then the rest mm -hmm. of these other cards for other agencies outside of the executive yeah. branch are. PIV compatible, mm -hmm. PIV interoperable, okay. PIV all kind of all kind of flavor. You and I played with that for the city for a while. Yeah, remember that? So I remember, yeah. and that's, I think it was good for for our viewers to mm -hmm. to think about this. Is that you know you're you're you work for a company, whether it be a bank or mm -hmm. a tech company or whatever. They've given you a credential mm -hmm. that you can or cannot use to get in out of certain doors, yep. and there's there's just a plethora of different ways that these are all managed, controlled, operated, and so mm -hmm. on. There's no common integrated piece like there's iPhone Samsung all the yep, different players yep. right they, they all run a little bit differently mm -hmm. now you've got all these access cards all yep. running differently yep well some on more secure systems than yeah, others yeah and, and that's that's what currently is the the conundrum with the federal government is standardizing okay. on single areas so I I can tell you right now if I, if I were going to go to let's say um, Paycom to compact fleet to the Marines I'm going through three different access control systems because they're so it's not a standardized access control system. So it's a question of getting getting my credentialing to go across all platforms, and it's right. and it's difficult because I may have one company that's still using old Magstripe technology, I may be using another one that's using iClass technology, and I may be using one that's actually using PIV class technology. Right. So it's it's tough to to kind of do it because there's no. There's no centralized directive saying you must standardize on all this right now today other than some other standards saying, hey, we want you to use ODSP, we want you to use um, FIPS 140-2 encryption, and then after that, it yeah, kind of it, falls it by the wayside. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's kind of like the battle, I wonder if the millennials know this, when they had beta and, and VHS, VHS, right? Yeah. And then you know, VHS1 became yeah. the standard, yep. but then who has a VHS now? Yeah. And so then, and, you know, but there's still VHS 
tape recorders of them yeah. to this day yeah. at some some non-fed or whatever organizations yeah. where these guys are actually recording video on tape yeah. still and analog. today yeah. yeah today well it's less lossy so digital is always has loss you know with yeah. the video that people don't, don't often think about so there's, sometimes there's reasons for that analog recording the uh, I think an, an, another interesting facet that you, you, you sort of touched on is that mm. the, you know the the, the the executive branch, the federal government's a lot better about driving its requirements from a risk assessment perspective. Right. And so, you know, the they really look at the the level of protection that asset needs. He mm -hmm. mentioned a SCIF, for example, which is going to need the highest level mm -hmm. of protection. So, you know, you don't want to spend a whole lot of money securing 30 doors around the outside of a building when no. there's only really one room that's important. And so you secure that door because the expense is higher. Um, and the, the level of credentialing, the level of, of technology that goes into those credentials uh, is also more expensive. Yeah, right. So you know, a PIV card is you know somewhere a little south of two hundred dollars per card. Yeah, for, an, for a badge. A, right. Yeah. So our, our commercial grade I class, which you mentioned, which is a, still a, a, a different type of technology. Yeah, an I class credential might be a couple bucks. Yeah. So you know, there's there's that piece of the industry that also is trying to align itself with there what we would call best practice, but it's not always yeah, the, the yeah. best practice to go spend you know two hundred dollars per yeah, card. Absolutely. Per okay. So there's this class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Then there's a PIV card. Yeah. Yeah, and this is this a way? this is a, yeah. des, a desfire card over here. Desfire? This, this card, this, can, OSPP, this card can do desfire as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that's a that's the back end. So when you say OSDP, is open the supervised yeah. device protocol, yeah. which is one of the first in the state to be rolled out. Like yeah. That. So that and that's the newest. So we've gotten rid of that Wagon protocol, yeah, which we couldn't protect with right. the OSDP. We can actually yeah. encrypt protect that. It. Now we have a client that's actually running on uh, the first that's in the right. state running. That's so Where this the nice thing here, this one I think also you need a new one. It's kind of free. Yeah, well, this guy, okay. going away. This guy can run some some cryptography <laughs> yeah. between the actual card and the reader as I'll well. So it's it. a little, uh, there's a little more. It isn't always used, but that's another piece of the, of the puzzle. So, oh. but that's the so that's the and that's where we, and this when the second half of the show we'll talk about the symposium and what that's sure. going to get to people. But I think yeah, from the viewer perspective, is that that there is a lot more to this than what you yep. what you you think when it comes to protecting you. Your family, I mean, and, your and coworkers, your coworkers, sure. and whatever. Your and customers. I don't care if you're going to a big box store or wherever, and you're buying this stuff off the shelf. You better make sure you've secured it, and it comes sure. with instructions on how to secure it <laughs> itself. How, how to lock yeah. it down. How to lock that it life down. cycle management pieces. Be because yeah. it's just, it's just, you know, you hear about all these guys. Oh, it's just. You know, 1995. Go buy it. You peel it and stick it on the wall. It runs wirelessly, sure. wirelessly over your network, and you've got security. Well, maybe you just opened up your entire house. Yeah. To some maybe, well, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit in the security minute. I think you're I've got a, I've got a little advice on, that, on that, that, that piece of the pie. Okay. So what we'll do is, and uh, we're coming up probably on, believe it or not, on the first half of the show is almost over. Okay. And, and we're going to we'll go. We'll let Dieter talk on the next half. <laughs> okay. That's it. I'm out of here. <laughs> anyway. I'm just invited here. You're just invited. We'll let Dieter talk. He's I, the pretty face Am I today. talking too much again? No, it was me. <laughs> no, okay. Nice recovery there, co-host. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go grab Angus. He's got something he's going to oh, rant about. Oh, that's right. And, Angus is um, in the house. We'll come back and we'll talk about the upcoming symposium on uh, Safer Hawaii. Okay. Go to the tech star here. Be back in a minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. DiveHeart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others. And in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. Living in this crazy world. So far up in the confusion. Nothing is making 
Hey, welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. This is Hibachi Talk on Wednesdays. We're talking about a symposium for a safer Hawaii, but for the security minutes today, I just wanted to remind everybody there's been a lot of updates today specifically to uh, a lot of cameras. Possibly 10 million IoT devices have been in, uh, uh, a known vulnerability in, in uh, GSOAP protocol. Um, and it's, they call this vulnerability Devil's IV because it really grows and it really spreads. So. Um, make sure you're patching your video systems, your, your camera systems. Uh, inquire with your vendor or your manufacturer if they've got a patch, if they've written a patch for that. There's plenty of them that are out there today. And make sure you get those updates done. That's a part of good life cycle management, and you need to take care of it. All right, Angus, what's up, buddy? Good to hey, see you, man. Hey, Drew, how you doing there, lad? All right. Hey, how's your Bitcoin doing? Uh, mine has already gone up like 35%. 35% so in one week. Yeah, uh, that that's cheap awesome. That cheap fucker Garner never gave me any. He gave me some. Yeah, well, I got a one up on him. Hey, Dieter, <laughs> how are you doing, lad? I am doing fine. How uh, are you? You're going to show what I got here. Look at this. This Th is awesome. This is really cool. This is my, my new my new bit card. A bit pay card. Tell me about Guess it. Guess what? It's a Visa card. This is my gadget of the week. It's my Visa card. Okay. It's got Bitcoin on it. So, but I can go to a restaurant and a store okay. and use this to buy groceries. And it pays at U.S. cash, but de debits. My or credits my Bitcoin account. Okay, How's that? so that's awesome. So I got Bitcoin. Thank you, DCCA. And I'm gonna. I, I, I got my Bitcoin. So you've gotten around them. I gotten around them, lad. And nice. I got it on a Visa well, debit card. They collect the money off the payment anyway, so they're happy to get their cash. Their they're tax. gonna get their GET. Yeah, yeah. GET. So they get their GET. But guess what? I get to use my Bitcoin to that's buy right. stuff. That's right. Right on. <laughs> so there. That'll teach you. Good on you. Yeah, look good on me. Very good on me. <laughs> Anyway, that's my guess of the week. Check it out. Check out BitPay. Check about the BitPay wallet. And check about the BitPay Visa MasterCard. Or Visa, not Visa MasterCard. What am I saying? <laughs> Your Visa debit card. I cannot think. My brain's in neutral. Anyway, like we say it every one of my seconds. Seconds, let your ring game be where you be. Hello? Ha. <laughs> Thanks. Angus is, just wants you to get some kind of card that goes to Bitcoin. Check out Visa. I think he was using uh, it already. Yeah, I think, I think he might have been at the local libation. <laughs> Pretty good stuff. Anyway, we're back with Dieter talking about Symposium for a Safer Hawaii. So tell us a little bit about the show. What's, gonna, what's the deal? Well, we have an amazing symposium. Yeah. And we're going to primarily what we're talking about is how we can help Hawaii go to a safer place. Okay. So we actually have four sessions, but I'm going to talk about mine first. And <laughs> okay, we'll talk about idea. the other three. So we have a federal government session, and primarily what we're going to be talking about is end and end encryption, ODSP, okay. OSDP, sorry, I've always had a problem with that word. Um, and we're going to talk about how the federal government can move to more FIPS 201 compliancy as well as 140-2 for end to end encryption. Okay. And to keep, basically what we have today is that everything's electronic today. Everything, um, you know, there's ways to skim credentialing, there's ways to cheat systems. And what we want to talk about primarily to the federal side is like, hey, what can you do to help prevent this from happening? Mm -hmm. What can you do to move forward and change the way mm -hmm. your access control is? And in fact, I'm very happy to say that we have a great keynote speaker. We have the assistant agent in charge of Hawaii for the FBI, Tuan Yin, who's, who's oh. a cyber expert. And who's uh, been a guest on Hibachi Talk. Who's been a guest on Hibachi Talk. He's going to come and he's going to talk primarily to, to the people on the federal side about what they can do to protect their access control, protect their systems, and keep themselves safe. And like I just like to say, one of the things I love to get to do is I get to protect the people that protect us. Yeah. So it's good stuff. It's yeah. great stuff. What, so what's Gordo? I see Gordo's name on there. Oh, yeah, we're going to skip pa past that one. We're going to go to the other <laughs> two. Don't worry about that. So first that of all, let me, filler. let me tell you the first two days. So the first day is going to be August 29th, and our first session is from 8 a.m. to 11, and then we're going to have our second session is from 12 to 3. So the first session is going to be all about advancements in technology and access control in the commercial space. Okay. okay. So, so banking, banking, retail, retail um, you know, critical infrastructure, critical infrastructure, utilities. all on the lines. Yeah, utilities, all on the uh, lines. There's so many. <laughs> there's so many. <laughs> the list can just go on and on. But, yes. but you That's know what I mean. It's a big session. You know, it's a, a big of, session. A so, I mean, part of what we're doing is, you know, why you want to get away from 125 kilohertz um, proximity cards, why you want to get away from magnetic stripe cards, mm -hmm. why you want to move into the new 
the new areas with Desfire, with CIOs, with um, PIV class. Oh, and just be able to learn OTP. about all yeah. those things. And you get a chance to learn about that. So the next one is going to be focused on the healthcare sector. Oh, As you know, probably one of the biggest employers in, in the state is the healthcare sector. Oh. I mean, we have you have Queens, you have HPH, you have the Kaiser, Kaiser the you, state you know, hospitals, you've got Castle, a lot of areas. Castle, yep. yeah. So part of Saint it is, Francis. yep, and Francis. part of it is uh, how, how do you protect yourself um, across the board with access control? How do you protect HIPAA? How do you protect your high-tech compliance needs? So how do you ensure that your facility is it's secure. Mm. Especially in a, something like a hospital where there's yeah. people, you've got people, yep. clinicians, the public, yep. wandering throughout this yep. um, enterprise. Pharmacies, yeah. so pharmacies are there's a high crime draw, yep. right? There's yep. the opioid yep. addiction yep. problem yep. out there, and there's a lot of, a lot of things yep. going on in healthcare. Crazy stuff. And the other side is to try to help protect your PII, your personal information out there. How, how do we do that? HIPAA compliancy? All that stuff. So um, the speaker for both those sections is actually going to be the um, it's James Cruz, who's um, with the Department of Homeland Security, can talk to a lot, very knowledgeable person, is going to talk a lot about uh, what Homeland Security does and how it can help support both the commercial industry and the healthcare industry, and also just uh, the changes in what, what these, uh, what commercial needs and what healthcare needs to help protect their data. Help and protect what, yeah, and they, they've been funded, DHS has yeah. really been funded to reach out into some of these uh, more regulated industries and yep. help them with audits and things like that. So that's really powerful and a lot of yep. people don't know about that. They're yeah. actually looking at the blockchain. Yeah, oh, wow. exactly. So as part of, as part of the healthcare record nice. management nice. and security. Yeah, which the they will probably adopt. It will get adopted. Okay. It'll be the Ethereum one too, I'm predicting. Nice. <laughs> So, and then what else you got? This is a one day or two days? This is the first day, so okay, it's two no, days. No, no. So we have the 29th and we have the, um, now we're gonna have the 30th. So just to let you know, the first session includes breakfast on the 29th and the second one includes lunch. Okay, I was gonna ask you a little bit later who can attend, but since you're you know offering what? up food, we'll ask that now. <laughs> well, primarily, I mean, it, when we talk about those two sessions, I mean, obviously commercial, you know, if you're, if you're a bank security manager or if you're, um, you know, even if you're just worried about how do I secure my space? Let's say you're opening up a retail shop tomorrow. Yeah. How am I going to secure shopping my space? Shopping center. Shopping center. I mean, anybody along those lines, please come down for that session. It's going to be very informative. Obviously, healthcare, um, you know, we are looking for more people that are within the health healthcare industry. But, you know, if you're a doctor's office, you're a small private practice, you're an urgent care facility, yeah, feel free. we love to have sure. you. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit at the end on how you can register and who you can call to get there, and we'll get you, get you going. So then on the 30th, we have the federal government session, which I talked about, which is from 10.30 to 12.30. Lunch will be included. But then probably the best session that's going to happen <laughs> is the A&E consultant sessions with Gordon Bruce <laughs> as the keynote speaker over there. Yeah, you know she put me at the end when everybody goes home. Oh, sorry. Well, <laughs> well no, they're not going home because I think we're going to do an open bar. No, I'm just kidding. On Gordon's cap. <laughs> I'm noticing that's at 1.30, so we're going to have to rush out of here to get down there and, and kick off your keynote. <laughs> is that on Wednesday? That's on a Wednesday. That's on a Wednesday. Oh, okay. That'll be fun. All right. Uh, I have that on my calendar. I, I hope so. <laughs> I'll drag I, you off the stage. I didn't. Right. I didn't do any of the planning on this. So, All just, right, so. so okay. but so, Gordon, what are you going to talk about? I have no idea. No, okay. I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about my experiences in the field, okay. and also going to talk about things I see happening in the future. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit on the blockchain and oh. try to try to explain how that will work in this space. So it's yeah. not going to be about the Bitcoin yeah. first piece, but the underlying foundation behind yeah. it and how nice. that. That'll be start to get incorporated. Yeah, in this for space. every transaction. Okay. For every sure. transaction that happens, include going in and out of a door, okay. or taking a picture of you going in and out of a door, or any of those kinds oh, of absolutely. things. So I'll talk about that as well. So, so how much is this? This is free ninety, free 90 free. Oh, free ninety free. Yes, free ninety well, free. Well, and how many seats are available to for people to attend? Well, right now we, I believe, um, about fifty per session. We I got think. fifty per session. I know that we're we're half full on uh, on the commercial and. And on that so side, so that's a total of how many people? A couple hundred. A couple hundred. Two hundred people. Two hundred people. Where's it going to be at? It's going to be at the Pacific Club. Oh, parking is awesome. So yeah, great parking. It's so always a good venue there. It's been a few years yeah. since we did one of these down yeah, so there. So this is, you're going to take over the place then? You think? You're going to have two hundred people per day? No. Yeah, fifty at a 50, session. Fifty hundred. So. so fifty in the morning, then a oh. different group of fifty in the afternoon. Oh, so you're going to break them up into four, into quarters? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. see. Yeah. So they so won't. Some, well, some. What, what else? I want to come to all four. Well, you have to register for all four. We may have, yep. may make you have to select your primary and not allow you in the others. Oh. We'll see how full it gets. Okay, so, all right, because I was wondering about four. Yeah. Okay, because I have people I want to invite. Okay. Definitely. So, you know, so I got some clients that I think would be great if they went. Sure. Well, good. So let's talk about 
what number you need to call to get there. Yes, yeah, what's our the website. Number? Or you whatever. want to go to, uh, so RSVP, you want to call 808 836 4094. So 836 4094. Or you can go online and go to www.istex.net. How do you spell ISTEX? I don't think that'll help you. No, that's not it. What is the website? You should go to our Facebook page. Our Facebook or... page. Sorry. What am I saying? ISTEX is your website. And that's the website. There's some of those. Uh, there's some of those uh, Eventbrite Eventbrite? Event rights. Yeah, we got event rights as well. Sessions. You got some event event rights and so on. Or you can yeah. just um, e email us at Hibachi Talk. Yep. Yeah. Or call the office or yeah. whatever. Call the office. So. Sorry about that. Yeah, bought you talk at Outlook.com. Email me and, and I'll we'll get you on the invitation we'll forward list. It on. We'll put on get get you on the invitation. I give them my email, but it's a little too complicated. <laughs> yeah. so. But um, so absolutely. So welcome to we'd like to see everybody there. It's gonna be a great session. Um, well great sessions. And the one great thing is that if you ever wanted to know something about security, this is the time to kind of ask. We'll have panels as well. So it's not just single, we'll have multiple speakers there as well as panels. Yeah, we're going to be able to ask them. And, down and there people will get a chance to interact and see, yep. you know, what's happening within their yeah. particular industries yep. and, and things like that. You can, you can interact with your peers and ask, hey, what are you doing? What do you have today? So it's a great time for, for people to actually see who their peers are and have those conversations. I don't think anyone's done one like this. Um, not on this magnitude. You know, we, and typically not uh, the panel sessions. You know, we've got enough expertise coming in. We felt a panel would be valuable as well. You know, so we'll have some single speaker stuff to put out, kind of put the information out there and get the wheels yeah, turning. Right. Then we'll jump on the panel session, have some Q&A. And, you know, it's a, So August 29th, August 30th. 30th. Yes. What time to start in the morning? Um, 8, 30, 8 a.m. for... Um, the morning session. For the 29th and... 10:30 a.m. for the 30th. For so. the 30th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The feds guys sleep in. They don't get up early enough to make it. <laughs> you down said it to them. I didn't say anything. Why's your IRS <laughs> phone call coming tomorrow? <laughs> anyway, I want that all up. Hey, Dieter, thanks a lot, man. That hey, was thank awesome. you. Awesome. Great Appreciate to have you on the show. Yeah. Thank thanks you. for coming down. Drew, thanks thank for you. inviting me. And no, no good effort goes unrewarded. You are now number one, 129 in our series of autograph solo cups. Nice. Um, yeah. Please do not lose that. I will not. Um, I will keep it in a safe place. That's a lot of Bitcoin into these things. Anyway, I'm, I'm very one track mind lately, aren't I? Anyway, we want to thank everybody for watching the show. Please, and this is really kind of important stuff. And, and watch for this symposium. And again, if you want, if you can't remember everything, just Ibachi Talk at Outlook.com, and then we'll forward this on and get you invited. Anyway, like we say at the end of every show, how, how you, you doing? doing?